Hello, this is Don Hall. In this video, it's all about barrel firing, something I don't really know very much about, but my good friend Tim Hanrahan is going to take me through it. He uh, is an expert at it. We're going to go up to Quail Kilns next week and uh, try it out. He's going to show me how, to, how it works. He told me to make three uh, tall, narrow cylinders, something that fits inside of the kiln easily. And he told me to either use terracage or burnish the pot for, first. And so I did that. I burnished this one with my lucky burnishing stone that I collected in the riverbank. It's nice and smooth and tight. And this one, I'm going to put terra sigillata on it. Uh, he told me to use terra sig or burnish, and so I'm going to do them both just to see what the difference is. Now, if you want to know about terra sig, there's another video I made earlier that's on the channel that you can learn all about how it works. In this one, I'm going to try something different, something he didn't tell me about, but I'm going to try it just to see how it comes out. I painted porcelain slip on this one. This, this one's handmade. These two I threw on a potter's wheel. So I'm going to just go ahead and put some terra sige on this one. And uh, he, Tim had mentioned that it's best to do this when the pots are bone dry. And so that's pretty much what I got here. And apparently terra sige will make the surface quite nice and tight and it'll accept the colors that we're going to get in this firing. So the next scene I'll be up in quail kilns and we'll be preparing to fire them in his barrel kiln. I needed to get some cow pies for the firing and this good looking fellow helped me out. When I got to Quail, Shelly was there making oxide packets for the firing. Okay, so you start off by cutting about a five by five um, piece of newspaper. And then you're going to fold it in half into a triangle. Then you're gonna take these bottom points and you're gonna fold them in about halfway. And then fold the other side halfway then you're going to take this one and stick this side in to this one over here and then there you go there's your envelope and then we're going to fill it with some copper carbonate but first i'm going to put on my mask and i'm going to put on some gloves i'll be right back I have my gloves and my mask on because we're going to be using copper carbonate. We don't want to get it on our hands. We don't want to breathe it. So, okay, so now I'm ready to fill my little envelopes with the copper carbonate. So I'm going to kind of do a little um, pinch action right here and I'm going to open up this part of the envelope. Then I'm going to take a little spoon and I'm going to add some copper carbonate to the envelope. Okay, then I'm gonna fold this all the way over and I'm gonna take the tip of this and put that inside of the envelope. And there it is, there's your little envelope. Great, thanks Shelly. Mm -hmm. Here's a photo of my three pieces with the packets that Shelly was making attached with copper wire. Tim Hanrahan is going to now show us how to load the barrel for firing. Let's put sawdust in the bottom of the uh, barrel. Uh, finer sawdust is going to produce a deeper black. This sawdust here will produce a nice black but not quite so deep. So you want to spread it, <coughs> excuse me, evenly in the bottom. Okay, we're getting ready to load the first barrel. You can see what we've done with the pots have been decorated with the wire and the chemicals attached to them. Some of them with the ferric chloride have been wrapped in 
uh, foil to keep it somewhat enclosed. So we've staged these on the top of the drum so that we can get an idea how many pots can go in there. So you'll see that it'll take three, six, eight around and nine in the center and then we'll stack a couple on top like this. All right, and then we'll come back to where we start putting in the rest of the stuff. Do is, and all of the pots have been staged in the direction we want them to go in the fire. So this one wants to go open down or top down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in here in the sawdust and I'm going to nestle it right down until I hit the bottom of the pot. So this is about finger deep, all right, with sawdust. And the, and the finer the sawdust, the darker the color you're going to get. These are primo Calaveras County cow pies, dried to perfection. Now we're going to put those around the pots, as you see here. And we want to try and make sure that the cow pies are touching as much of the pot as can possibly be. So it might be a little wiggling to do. And you put some of the pots some down into the sawdust to turn them black. Is sawdust that right? will burn the hottest. So what that'll do is it'll give you a really brilliant black. And then it'll, because it doesn't come all the way up, it'll give you like a nice landscape ring that goes around the pot, which is gives it a really nice contrast between the black and the pastels that are come from the cow pies. Tim arranged the pottery in the bottom of the can the way he wanted and then filled the can up about halfway with cow pies. Then some kindling and some logs and we were ready to fire. Right. Right. Any wounds? Wait, don't we have to do the witching pot first? Mm -hmm. The kindling? What goes first? Oh, wait, the kindling. 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 Where's the kindling? Right here. Good noticing. Trust me, it'll all burn. Let it go. Yes. And it begins. We lit the fire three and a half hours ago and it's burnt down to the point where the pots are just starting to poke up through the coals. Hey, good morning. It's Tim Hanrahan again from Quiet Kilns here in Murphy's, Queen of the Sierra. And uh, we're going to do the unveiling of the uh, barrel fire. We lit these last night around six o'clock, a little bit of smoke, but we had our uh, spark arresters on there and our lids to keep the dust down. Now we're going to see what we have in our uh, pots, just like opening presents on Christmas Day. So this is what you get. It all burns down to ash. This was a uh, pot that had seaweed. So here's one that was fired with the bottom down. And Don was asking about my little curly cues yesterday. So if we take that off of there. You'll see that it gives you a little, little curly Q mark on there, like a necklace mark. See the necklace and then the curly Q? Hello again, here we are at the end of a two day long process of doing a barrel firing here in Murphy's, California at Quail Kilns. I want to show you the first one we have here has got a little bit of ferric chloride sprayed on it where you can see the orange. And then it was wrapped in aluminum foil with some seaweed, which gives you these really interesting patterns. That's a combination of the salt, the iodine, and just the burning of the seaweed. Here's another one, which is pretty traditional pit fire for me. The black from the sawdust. And we used a copper scrunchie on there, which gives you these nice uh, fish scale look. And of course, these are all low fire, so they don't hold water, but they're great for dried flowered arrangements. Um, here's another one that which shows you the impact of the wire. You saw us wrapping the wire on there with the little necklaces I talked about, and we stuck the copper carbonate packets underneath, which gives you the, uh, the reds. And then this would have come from a cow pie, 
and maybe a packet of copper carb in there. And this one was fired this way in the sawdust, so the bottom has got the black on the sawdust. Got another interesting one over here. This one again was, was fired with the uh, ferric chloride and seaweed. You can see the seaweed, the ferric chloride gives you the nice brownish oranges. And then I also, I think, put some uh, powdered miracle Grow in there. And also some of the, I think the aluminum foil is sticking to it here, which gives it a kind of an interesting look. So that's a good sample. Uh, there's another one with a good mark from the wire. You can see that one, the mark from the wire goes all the way down from around the necklace, right down in the copper carb would have given you that. The nice yellows and oranges come from the cow pies. And uh, a nice look. And the nice thing about these is that when you're husband dusts you can put it on the shelf and look at it one way and then when he dusts he can turn it a little bit and see it a little bit different way so a good selling point thanks for coming by and taking a look happy to have you okay well here's my finished pieces they've all been kind of polished up a little bit and uh, I'm really happy with them they didn't come out quite as colorful as Tim's but he's the expert and I really really appreciate how much he was willing to share his knowledge with everyone. And I also want to thank Pamela Quile and all the other folks at, at up at Quile Kilns that made uh, this possible and donated their time to us. And uh, this, so this is Don Hall, and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.